Ay, sa example number Thank one. You. Yeah. Example number one for infinite limits. Evaluate the limit of 1 over x cubed as x approaches 0 from the left side. Okay, from the left side. By theorem 4.1, since our exponent, uh, the exponent of, what's this? The exponent of our x is odd, we'll be applying, applying the second theorem. Theorem 4.1.2. Now, uh, if the exponent is odd, then the function is trying to approach negative infinity. So we apply the theorem 4.1. And furthermore, furthermore, observing the sign of numerator and and our denominator. Since our numerator is positive. And our denominator is approaching 0 from the left side. Applying this time the theorem 4.2. 4.2, yeah. This. Okay. If numerator is positive, and if our denominator is approaching 0 from the left side, then it, the function approaches negative infinity. So that's it. That is 4. Example number one. Ay, example number two tayo. Huwag muna natin i-graph ito kasi medyo simple pa lang siya. Let's try 4.2. Example 4.2. So this is, I'm telling you a while ago na we have to evaluate first the limit of our numerator. And then, the limit of our denominator separately. Okay, so the limit of 2x over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the left side or from the negative side of 3. So, again, evaluating our numerator gives us 6 okay. by theorem 3.3, your substitution, direct substitution. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 here is a non-zero constant at the same time. 6 is a positive. It's a positive value. Therefore, our numerator is greater than 0. And observe our denominator. x or by direct substitution, 3 minus 3 is 0. So, the limit or our denominator is trying to approach zero. But which side? Is it from the positive or from the negative side? We can identify that. Or we can determine which side by observing how you given it. Which side ba? Ang galing. Uh, yung input natin. So our input is... As x approaches 3 from the left side, okay, from the left side, meaning to say uh, the values of x near 3 but are actually less than 3. Now, we are using values of x near 3 but are less than 3. So, I think I'll give that, which means to say that we are approaching 0 from the negative side. So, So, we have this parang summary, summary of our limit. Function is 4.1. Positive yung numerator from the left side yung denominator. So, we have negative infinity. Okay, negative infinity. Exam question. If you have question, no? Huwag tayo may if none, then let me... Sir, you know, choppy po kanina. Which part? Which part ako nag -choppy? Which part? Hindi na malaman. Doon po sa minus... Ay, doon po sa... Denominator? 
There's one. Apple. Okay, by direct substitution, no, we have three minus three, which is zero. So, uh, we wanted this time to see whether uh, which part of the values of x came from, or we came from. Is it from the negative sides or from the positive side? We can determine that by observing our given input. So your input na then. Observe this one. Our input or our x is trying to approach 3 from the left side. So meaning to say we are to use values of x that are near 3 but less than 3. Okay? Near 3 but not, uh, but, and less than that, sorry. Near 3 and also less than 3. So meaning to say we are to use, uh, we are to approach 0 from the negative sides. Okay? From the negative side or from the left side. So summary, in summary, we have 6, the limit of our numerator, and the limit of our denominator is 0 from the left side. Applying the theorem 4.2, if, if the numerator is positive and if our denominator is approaching 0 from the left side, then the function is approaching negative infinity or decreasing unboundedly. That is example number two. Okay, moving on. Later, let me show you the graph. No? What do we mean by increasing unboundedly and decreasing unboundedly? So example number three. Uh, let's evaluate the limit of negative x minus five over square root of x minus 1 as x approaches 1 uh, from the right side. From the right side. So the same, we have to evaluate the limit of our numerator then the limit of our denominator separately. By direct substitution, we have negative 1 minus 1, we have negative 6. And clearly, negative 6 is Less than zero. Less than zero. And our denominator is approaching zero. Now which part? I mean, which side? Approaching zero from the positive or from the negative side? Dito natin It's okay. from the positive side. Greater than one. All values of x near 1 and at the same time greater than 1. So we are trying to approach 0 from the positive side. So in summary, we have negative 6 over approaching 0 from the positive side. Let me, you know, let me go back to our table. When our... And our numerator is negative, and our denominator is approaching zero from positive side. Therefore, the given function is approaching negative infinity. Let's verify that. Ayun, which is true, huh? since our function is trying to approach negative infinity. Negative infinity. Okay, before, before we proceed to example 4, okay, let me show you the graph of this function. Okay. okay. Here is the graph, negative, uh, negative 6 minus 5 over square root of x minus 1. Hmm. This is what the graph looks like. And uh, 
Uh, we are trying to approach 1. No? X is equal to 1 from the positive side. From the positive side here. No? From the positive side near 1. And greater than 1. Near 1 and greater than 1. Observe na lang natin yung values of x na. No? You can zoom in yung screen nyo para ma-observe nyo yung values. As we get closer and closer to 1, na no, from, the, from the right side, from the right side, what happened to y? Observe natin. As we get, as we get closer and closer to 1, our y becomes smaller and smaller. That is, what do we mean by decreasing unboundedly? So the, where, the, the more we get, the move closer to 1, or the more x value moves closer to 1, our y becomes smaller and smaller. Okay. That is decreasing and boundedly question no question well, yes. okay example number four evaluate the limit of square root of x squared minus nine over x minus three as x approaches three from the right side. So first note that uh, by direct substitution we can obtain a zero over zero. Right, now if we recall what we had during the previous module, the limits of functions, this is actually an indeterminate form. Indeterminate form. Now, when we uh, try to look for other functions that is equivalent to the given, possible na makakuha pa rin tayo ng limit. Possible that we can still obtain a limit. So, okay, by simplifying or manipulating our given equation, we'll be using x minus 3. Uh, square root of the quantity x minus 3 squared. So this is from properties of radicals. No? Properties of radical. If we are to extract the square root of a square number, no, we'll be returning to the same number. So vale, ito yun. x minus 3, our denominator. So extracting this and squaring our radicand, uh, it doesn't matter since there's no, or uh, nothing happens. Uh, nothing happens. Parang walang nangyari dun sa ating dinamitor. Okay. And then, here. And then, at the same time, we factored our numerator, x squared minus 9 is difference between two squares. And the, the factor are, the factors are sum and difference between two terms, x minus 3 and x plus 3. And then separating here the two x minus 3, we have this line, okay? We have this line, square root of x minus 3 x plus 3 over x square root of x minus x minus 3. So we can identify common factor between our numerator and denominator. We can cancel out square root of x minus 3. So we have a new function that is basically equivalent to the original one. Square root of x plus 3 over square root of x minus 3. Okay? So whatever. Sir, ano nga po nga? Yes, Jeremiah. Paano nga po ulit ma uh, ano sir kung nagagawin po siyang square root of x minus 3 squared po, yung denominator? 
this one. Kasi we're trying to look for other ano, other function na, na equivalent. At take note ha, if indeterminate form yung nakuha natin, there is still a way of of looking to other into other functions that are equivalent to the given one. Pero if ever na this is not a non-zero value, there's no chance na. There's no chance. But in this case, we have 0 over 0. So there's still a chance. So by doing that, let's try to look for other ways na, na somehow we could find, we can look for other functions that is equivalent to the given one. And it so happened na our numerator contains uh, square root. No? Square root. So that's why uh, to apply the properties of radicals, we also uh, we need to to make our our denominator. Uh, our denominator should be containing square root as well. Uh, and by extracting uh, by extracting x minus three and squaring afterwards, parang ulam ng yari. Doesn't it does not change our denominator? Okay. Okay. Thank you, po, sir. <clears throat> and then, whatever limit we can obtain dun sa new function natin, square root of x plus 3 over x, square root of x minus 3, will also be applied to our original function. That is, the theorem 3.4 replacement theorem no? dun sa previous module natin. Okay. So by direct substitution only. By direct substitution, our numerator, we have square root of 3 plus 3. I since x is approaching 3, then we have square root of 6. And square root of 6 is a positive number. Now let's, if you try to evaluate this using your calculator, this is actually a positive number. And so our numerator is positive. And our denominator is trying to approach zero from the right side. Now whatever the subscript here, non input natin, will be the, uh, it is the, side where our where the denominator is trying to approach no? Kumbaga, denominator is trying to approach zero from the right side so to summarize our solution we have square root of six positive and our denominator approaches zero from the right side so if we were to observe again our theorem 4.3, uh, the function is trying to approach positive infinity. Positive infinity. Now let me show you again the graph. Yes, the graph. It trying to approach approach 3 from the right side from the right side and y should be increasing without bound while x is trying to approach 3 from the right side y should be increasing without bound Where is 3? Napin natin x is 3. From the right side. Ito. From the right side. And you can zoom in. While x value gets, x values get closer and closer to 3, y becomes larger and larger. Or y values become larger and larger. Or increasing without. Wala na. Okay, class na yun. 
if I hindi makita niya. Increasing without lock. Yan ang makita. There. Last. Ayun. Last na siya doon. Wala na siyang value. Siguro, sukumpit pa yung graphing calculator natin. So, that's it. That is example number, what, what number is this? Number four. Example number four. Question. In infinite limits. Infinite limits. Hello. One more question. Hello, sir. Okay. Hello, sir. We can now proceed to the second part. Second part, limits at infinity. So it is the opposite no, of infinite limits. If in infinite limits, as x approaches any value, the function is approaching the infinity. Here, our input is trying to approach infinity. And we have to evaluate what what specific value the function is trying to approach. Observe this table. Observe this table. Here, uh, our x values are increasing without bound. Okay. Increasing without bound. And there is this specific value that y, or our f of x, is trying to approach. And uh, doon sa negative part, our negative side, as our x becomes smaller and smaller or decreasing unboundedly, again, there is this specific values, value of y that the, the, the function is trying to approach. I, by, by the way, the function given is 2x squared over x squared plus 1. Here's the function. So, we can write yung input x natin in, in this, uh, using the symbol. x is approaching positive infinity. And yung negative naman, of course, x is approaching negative infinity. Which, which so happen, their limit is equal. They are both approaching two. Approaching two. Now we have this theorem 4.3. If r is any positive integer, then the limit of 1 over x raised to r. As x approaches positive infinity, is equivalent to 0. And the limit of 1 over x raised to r. As x approaches negative infinity is equal to zero. Meaning to say, you know, since they were both equal, regardless, uh, regardless whether x is increasing or decreasing infinitely or unboundedly, basta ganito yung form ng function natin, 1 over x raised to r, it's always be the limit is always be equal to zero. The limit is always be equal to zero. Okay. Let's try to apply the, the limit with examples. Example 4.5. But this time we have another procedure now that we need to uh, to apply before we get through the specific limit. So what is that procedure? Uh, listen very carefully. We have added procedure here. So evaluate 4x minus 3 over 2x plus 5 as x approaches positive infinity. And let's also try to find the limit in the function with the same function but this time as x approaches negative infinity. Okay, solution. Let me read this. As x becomes large, 
both numerator and denominator becomes large. So, it is not obvious what happens to their ratio. To evaluate the limit at infinity of the given function, we first divide. This is the added procedure. First, divide both numerator and denominator by the highest power of x that occur in the denominator. Uh, take note of this. In evaluating uh, limits at infinity, we have to divide both our numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in our denominator. So, serve lang natin. Ano ba yung highest power of x? That is, since linear lang naman yung given, our numerator is linear, and our denominator is linear, so hanapin natin yung linear. So, here is the variable x which has the highest exponent or highest power. Meaning to say, we need to divide our numerator by x and our denominator by x. Right. If, uh, if in case na x squared yan, then we have to divide our numerator by x squared and our denominator by x squared. Basta, whatever the highest. Whatever the variable x with the highest exponent or highest power. We may assume that x is not equivalent to zero since we are interested only in large values of x. Large values of x since nga, it approaches positive infinity or increasing without bound. For the given function, the highest exponent of x, the denominator is 1 linear. So we divide both the numerator and denominator by x. Moreover, applying theorem 2.2 and theorem 4.3, the theorem 2.2 natin is the limit of the quotient where we have to evaluate the limit of our denominator, I mean numerator, divided by the limit of our denominator. So doing that, okay, this one. In this line, we already divided our given function, our given numerator and denominator by x. Then from there, of course, if we were to separate uh, the, the operations here, if we were to separate this, hmm, separate na lang natin. This becomes minus three over x. Okay, or x over x minus three over x. Likewise, in our denominator, this would have become five over x. Five, five over x. So there's this common common factor, no? We have four x over x is four, two x over x is two. Hi. And then uh, this three over x here, we can actually simplify this or separate the numerator. We can rewrite this in as 3 times 1 x, 1 over x, and we have 5 times 1 over x. Okay? Are we clear with our uh, no, operations? In such way, we can apply. Okay, why is it we need to separate? the constant the the constant factor of 3 over x and 5 over x so that we can apply the theorem 4.3 this one theorem 4.3 we have 1 
over x raised to r. In our case, um, exponent x natin is only 1. Okay. And then theorem 2.2, let's evaluate the limit of the numerator and the limit of our denominator by applying 2.2. So separately, what is the limit of 4 as x approaches positive infinity? Okay, what theorem is this? Limit of constant is always be the constant. Now, if you remember, the limit of a constant for whatever the x is trying to approach will always be the constant. So that is the limit of 4 as x approaches positive infinity is 4. That's why we have 4 here. And likewise, minus limit of 3 as x approaches positive infinity is 3 is also a constant. So the function is try to approach the constant then. Okay, we have 3. And times, take note, this is multiplication. Uh, this is multiplication. This came from 3 over x. This came from 3 over x. And then applying the theorem, limit of 1 over x as x approaches positive infinity or regardless of the uh, of which side the uh, our infinity is coming from, either positive or negative, it's always be equal to zero. It's always be equivalent to zero. So same with our denominator, limit of constant, we have 2 plus 5 times 0. And then simplifying the, the operation 4 minus 3 times 0 over 2 plus 5 times 0 will give us 4 over 2. Or its lowest form is 2. Okay? Is 2. Meaning to say... The limit of 4x minus 3 over 2x plus 5 as x approaches positive infinity is equivalent to 2. And if we solve the other one, say since pareho lang naman yung theorem natin, sabi ko nga regardless of which side, the infinity, uh, we are trying to consider it's always be equivalent to 0. So pareho lang. Similarly, the limit of 4x minus 3 over 2x plus 5 as x approaches negative infinity is also equivalent to 2. Question. Uh, just raise your hand or just uh, say something so that I could recognize you. Hello. No question? Hello, sir. None, sir. <coughs> Okay, let's try to graph. graph natin. Let's try to graph. Patong ko na lang na. Okay, the red one. We have the color red. Right, observe then yung difference ng dalawa. Nung limits, infinite limits and limits of infinity. Yung infinite limits would give us a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. Whereas, uh, our limits of infinity naman, we have the horizontal asymptote. Although, parehong meron, meron siyang vertical to horizontal. Pero we're concerned with the horizontal asymptote. Let's say we're trying to uh, to make our x values particularly larger or particularly smaller. So dito. Then your x, x value. Yung red ba yun? Red yun, no? We need uh, x from the right side or 
increasing unbounded increasing unbounded tayo. So here are the values of x. Paki zoom in na lang. Here are the values of x. What happened to values of y as x becomes larger and larger? Ay red. Yung red, yung red, yung red. Ayun. Observe natin yung x na. As x becomes larger and larger, there is this value of y that the function is trying to approach. Which pa tayo? Larger and larger, 80, 90, 100. Let's go. Go up. Let's try to get larger x values. 102, uh, 120. 130, 140, and there is this specific value of y naught that the graph is trying to approach. And that is, based on our solution, that would be 2. And same goes to the other side. Kabilang side naman. Kabilang naman. Aking graphing tool. Hindi nyo nakinaya. Um, right side, observe then natin what happened to y if when our x values becomes, x values become smaller and smaller. Okay. Negative 70, negative 80, negative 90, 100, and same goes. While our x becomes smaller and smaller, y is trying to approach. So that is our next limits at infinity. Limits at infinity. No question? If you have a question, just raise your hand. Para alam po na kailangan ako ulit din. If none, then let me proceed to our next example. I think this will be the last for this module. Module 4.8. Hi. We have cubic. Cubic 2x cubed minus x plus 5 over 4x cubed minus 1 as x approaches negative 8. So first thing to do is identify uh, the highest power of x in our denominator. Let me repeat. First thing to do is, in evaluating limits of infinity, is to observe the highest exponent of x in our denominator. In this case, that would be x cubed. Okay, that would be cubed. So we were to Divide our numerator and denominator by x cubed. I by x cubed. So doing that, we have this line. We have this line. We have two x cubed minus x plus five over x cubed over four x cubed minus one over x cubed. And let me separate this one para malina. Separate the operations first. Oops, 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 oops. We have two x cubed over x cubed minus x over x cubed plus. 5 over x. Right, 5 over x. <clears throat> and then, likewise, in our denominator, we have 1 over x. And then, evaluating each 
term. 2x cubed over x cubed will give us 2. Okay? Again, 2x cubed over x cubed is 2. Minus x over x cubed is 1 over x squared. And... Ah, nawala yung cube ko dito, sorry. This should have... Ay, malino tong line na to. Clear tayo dito, no? And then later on, we can separate 5 from here. So this could also be written as 5 times 1 over x cubed. Let me repeat. This 5 over x cubed can also be written as 5 times 1 over x cubed. And then, by uh, finding the limit of our numerator and denominator and applying theorem 4.3, 4.3, we have now this line. So, it says, uh, no, the limit of 2, huh? constant, limit of constant. So, the, the limit is 2 minus the limit is, yun, apply natin yung theorem. Apply natin yung theorem. So, always be equivalent to 0. Take note. So, always be equivalent to 0. So, that's why we have 2 minus 0 plus 5, no? Limit of constant 5 is 5 times the limit of 1 over x cubed is, again, is 0. Simplifying that, we have 2 minus 0 times plus 5 times 0 is 2. And then in our denominator, we have limit of constant 4 is 4 minus applying the theorem with 0. So we have 2 over 4. Simplest form is 1. The limit of the function as x approaches negative infinity is 1. My last, let me show you the graph. And then before we proceed to our next part, Hey there, what happened? Why? Let me close the other. to approach negative infinity no? so we are x is decreasing without bound x is decreasing without bound Voila. x is decreasing without bound okay. and as x is decreasing without bound happen to y it is approaching 0.5, All right? It's approaching 0.5 or one half. All right? Nagano kaliyot yung x natin. Let's go to get smaller and smaller. Let's go to negative red. Negative 100. Yung na. 
Okay, we have negative 100. As x becomes closer and closer. As x becomes smaller and smaller, y becomes closer and closer to 0 0.5. Okay, so that is limits at infinity. Any question? So I have one more example. Although, basic na lang. Later na lang. Any question? Answer. Okay. 